I remember being a kid. I can see that happening. That's oh, always, always something to do. The Unlaced. Unlaced podcast. It's actually not bad. <laughs> and we're live. The Unlaced podcast. We're back. Jesus is a big one. This is a big one. I don't know if it's your pleasure or mine, Jordan, but... Um, Definitely yours. Jordan DeGoey, mate, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks, Jake, mate. It's been a while. Uh, I'm very excited for the show and, and looking forward to see what questions you got for me. <laughs> yeah, I know. Where do I start? I mean, for those that don't know, Jordan is one of my best mates. So it's it's quite a challenging podcast when you know the person quite well. But um, it's been a bit of an interesting couple of weeks for you since, I guess, the season's finished and not a traditional off-season. Um, obviously, where you can get away and, and sort of do things and, and, you know, spread your wings. But, I mean, how have, have you been keeping busy? It's a great question. Yeah, I think a lot like everyone else uh, in most industries, uh, it's, a, it's a really tough position to be in. And, and for me, usually I'd be overseas right about now, um, probably in Bali, Vegas, uh, on right? a day bed, having a few cocktails. <laughs> yeah, um, But unfortunately, I'm stuck here. But to be honest, <laughs> mate, uh, you know, we had the privilege of continuing working um, and, and getting paid to do that. So we were really lucky in that regard. And, you know, we're still in lockdown and, and so is everyone else. So... Uh, you know, no matter who you are or what you do, you know, you're just as good as everyone else. So yeah. we'll get through this together kind of situation. Did it, um, did it ever get like old for you kind of those, the hubs that they're building around the AFL? Cause I know, <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> this is why this is going to be challenging. No, but I'm serious. Cause I've spoke to you when you were yeah. in, um, the Sunshine Coast, when you were staying up there, I was like, geez, you must be loving life. But you're there for probably like a good three, four months last year. And it, it was like. At the same time, it was kind of like, geez, this is, you know, stuck in the same environment. Was, was that easy? Was it hard for you? Um, last year, I had a few, a bit of family stuff and personal stuff going on too. So that probably made it a little bit more difficult just because yeah. you're so far away from, you know, family and friends. Yeah. Um, and it's hard because you're in a position where you're living alongside your teammates. Um, and that's something you've never been put in or never been forced upon you before. So, yeah. uh, you know... Just being able to bond with your teammates and, and see them their faces constantly was definitely challenging for me personally. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm not saying it was bad or anything. It was just a change. And yeah. it was just a change I wasn't expecting. But uh, yeah, in terms of, because we obviously missed the Melbourne lockdown. So we we're pretty fortunate to be in Queensland. Yeah. Um, but to be back in the Melbourne lockdown now, you know, we were so pr privileged to be up there and in the position we were. And, uh, you know, the weather's beautiful. The accommodation was pretty nice. Um, we didn't get to do everything we'd like to do, but hey, you can't, can't win them all. Yeah, that's true. It's true. I guess you, you're right. You were fortunate enough to, to keep playing, which is pretty awesome. Um, by the time this episode comes out, we'll, we'll definitely know who's won the grand final, but obviously we've shot this a couple of days before people and everyone listening. So let's hope if Jordan's got a bit of mystic Mac about him, but, um, doggies and, and Melbourne, obviously two pretty good teams that have, have really blitzed the, the year, especially Melbourne. Did, did you find some challenges playing them? I mean, what was really tough about them? Why are they where they are in, in some regards in your eyes? Um, well, we were actually the only team to beat them. Oh, you were? That was, was that? I think that was, yeah, that, yeah, we were the one, of, I think something like that. We were one of the te only teams to beat them. When, where was it that you played That them? was in Sydney. So this, was that Bucks' last that game? That was Bucks' last match. That's yeah, right. We spoke to the famous DJ Generic about this game. Yes. He said that's the, that's the win for the year. Yeah. You got it. You got a tip. Who's going to get that one? The doggies or demons? Uh, I'm going to have to go doggies. doggies. I think the way like their their run to the grand final has been so much harder than Melbourne, and I just mm. feel like they've just got that bit of a fighting spirit, which the doggies always seem to have. And I feel like Melbourne they haven't had an e haven't had it easy in all regards, but um, you know I think doggies is that really grit determination kind of team, mm. um, and it'll be exciting grand final. I think if they can get off to a good start, get their confidence up. I think they're going to be pretty hard to stop. Yeah. It's going to be a huge clash. Um, for, for you, I guess the sentiment around Collingwood as you as a player is, is enormous. Like you are absolutely loved. And I always say I've, I've been around some sporting people and, and famous people at times, but I've never been around anyone that gets as recognized as you in the street in Melbourne. It's unbelievable. That's what happens when you've got a bad head. Mate. Yeah. Everyone it's a big head. It's a big, <laughs> it a big head. It's but you're obviously, you've come from a, a footballing background. Your, your dad was a, obviously a footy player and, you know, you might say he, he didn't quite reach the heights of yourself. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but, he'd probably be the first to say that. <laughs> yeah, too, yeah. yeah, good. Um, <laughs> but you got picked up pick five in 2014, which is obviously a huge moment, a dream come true. 
Did, did you have any idea you were going to go as high as you were in the draft? Were you go, always going to Collingwood? Like, what was the background there? Um, well, no, not really. Uh, I spoke to Collingwood maybe a couple of times, but to be honest, I didn't think they had any interest in me. Uh, I was speaking to GWS a fair bit, and they had picks four and six. Okay. So, to be honest, I thought maybe GWS pick six. Um, but, yeah, that the way that year went was pretty crazy. I was pretty much a nobody at the start of the year and kind of played my way up into a position where, you know, I went in one of the, in, went in the top 10. So um, for me, landing at Collingwood, obviously my parents have lived 10 minutes from there. So mm. it's a dream come true. And, and it's such a big footy club. Like, like you said before, like the fan base is ridiculous and the people you get to meet is unbelievable. So um, I was really, yeah, really lucky to stay in Melbourne and, and obviously end up at Collingwood. Did you realize how big that club was before you went in it? Nah, definitely not. It's, it's funny because, you, you know, people say, oh, Collingwood's a big club, you know, they've got a big fan base, blah, blah, blah. But I think it's until you're in a position where you, you're exposed to it, like regularly, you truly understand the meaning of being a big club. Like yeah. there's fans everywhere. I could be anywhere in Victoria, anywhere like uh, interstate. I've been overseas plenty of times and still get recognized in Greece wow. and stuff like that from Collingwood supporters, just diehard Collingwood supporters. That's and it's crazy. just, you know... They tell me, oh, my grandpa went for Collingwood, which is natural for the family. Like, it's ridiculous, mate. Insane scenes. I, I actually don't think there's a bigger club in, from a sporting perspective in the country. Like, as in the consistency of fans and followers that you guys have, it's like, there's nothing that I think matches it. No, nah, not really. Sport. Like, that's how, that's how big it is. I think, well, Tigers at the moment, yeah, or true. during their run, that was, that was insane. Um, but, you know, they've been, like, they were in great form then, obviously, so that definitely helps the fans yeah. coming out and about, but yeah, in terms of, you know, the scale of the people we've got at the club or like when we did have Eddie, yeah. um, you know, the people at New Collingwood were, was ridiculous. So, yeah. um, I want to, I want to talk to you about the season that was because, um, we're obviously going to go through a bit of your history at the club, but just to kind of cap off the year that you had, I mean, you had a pretty, pretty awesome year yourself. And, and I guess there was a moment of changing the guard from, you know, playing under bucks and, and obviously, um, adopting a new coach, which has come to fruition now in, in Craig McRae. How, how did you kind of summarize the season? Obviously it probably was a disappointing one for, for the team collectively, but across the team and yourself, were, were you content with how you played individually and, and the growth you, you showed in the midfield? Um, yeah, to be honest, it was, it was a really difficult year. Um, first half for me personally started more up forward, more forward time. And to be honest, I just felt like my position was playing midfield. Um, and that's kind of where I wanted to be. That's where I wanted to grow as a player. Um, and I just needed that opportunity and it was just, you know, it wasn't just Bucks. It was the team itself at that time. You know, we needed someone up forward and, you know, I can play forward too. So, you know, that was kind of what the team needed for me. Um, and then the second half of the year with, with Banger coming in, um, his philosophy almost changed. It was more that we weren't going to make finals, but it was trying to get growth in the players or put players in different positions, which, you know, they could see their future at. And for that, the way he did that for me was, you know, he gave me more midfield minutes. Um, and cause we we're never going to play finals. This is the best time to learn a position or, or get better at a certain craft. So, you know, I'd constantly speak to Pendles, Tay Adams. I'm really lucky to play alongside those kind of guys yeah. and they demand a lot of you out on the field, but it's coming from the right position where it's try it's, they're trying to make you better. And I think I needed to be put in those positions where I was getting told what to do, where I needed to be. Um, and if I wasn't there, I was going to get told off. Do you know what I mean? Right, so you okay. need that structure and they hold you accountable. assistance. Yeah. You need yeah. to be held accountable. And yeah. I think by playing there more often, it's just like anything, the more you do it, the more you pick it up, yeah. the easier it is. Do you see yourself? Like, have you always seen yourself as a midfielder? Uh, never always. Nah. Yeah. Like it's, it's one of them tough ones, you know, like there'll be games where you starting or play in the midfield. The ball's just not going your way. You go forward and it's going your way. Yeah. And then there's other games where you go forward, you can't get near it, but you go in the midfield and you start getting around it more and you yeah. get yourself into the game. So it's almost like being able to know yourself what sort of day you're going to have as soon yeah. as the game starts. Because if you, if you take too long to figure that out, the game's done. Right. Like you've gotcha. done nothing. You haven't helped your team at all. Mm. So it's almost recognizing what sort of day you're having and what position is going to suit you best and going to help the team. Um, that, it, that inevitably will be the best in do the you, end. Do you think your, your sort of longer term future across, you know, Collingwood and the AFL is going to be in the midfield? Cause I mean, like people obviously, when you look at Collingwood, there's obviously 
a, a bit of a gap from from goal kickers at times or a spearhead forward, and you've played that role comfortably before. So yeah, yeah, uh, it's ah, uh, it's so tough. Like, yeah, it's a tough one. It's I'm at the mercy. Well, I'm I'm here for what the team needs. Yeah, if that makes sense. Like yeah. I'm not ever going to be that guy that's going to say I'm just playing midfield and that's it. Yeah, because I personally. Love sitting in the midfield because I love seeing you get 30 touches, which I think you had like 25 plus almost like 10 weeks in a row. It was unbelievable. It's the safest bet at the the TNB. (laughs) Um, But also from like, I also love seeing you kick goals and you have like a real knack for kicking goals too. So, I mean, you obviously want to complement both areas of the game, which probably touches on why you like, I guess, enjoy swinging between both, both positions. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's definitely a tough one. And, you know, there's days 100% where I'm going to play forward and there's going to be days where I'm going to play in the midfield. Mm. Um, it's almost, yeah, what the, I'll do what the team needs of me. And, you know, if someone goes down in the forward line, I can fill that position. Or if someone goes down in the midfield, I can do that too. So it's being able to swing between positions, like you said, which will benefit the team the most. So Yeah. Do you reckon this season's been your best? Um, it's, oh, it's probably close second to tw- half. I was, second I wasn't half happy is- with my first half, but second half personally, yeah. Yeah. We're starting to, you know, head in the right direction, but there's still like so much work yeah. That yeah, yeah, I yeah. need to do in order to, you know, be up with those elite guys. Yeah. Um, I mean, we spoke before we jumped on the air about how the running program you're going through right now, is that like a, an area for you, you really want to explode upon or, or improve on? Yeah. Well, the game's changing. It's more of a running game now. You don't need to be as strong, you know, yeah. you don't need to be able to lift really heavy weights or be too explosive. If you Probably can run out the games... Pardon? Probably good for you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> need all the help I can get, yeah. But, um, yeah, no, like I said, the game's changing. You need to be able to run and continuously run for days. Uh, like you see, the guns in the midfield, like even Molly Wines. Yeah. The more contests you can get to is the more opportunities that you can get in the game. So yeah, that's what Pendles would always tell me, you know. You, you get to 100 contests, you might get, 50, get the ball 50 times. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's all like that. The more chances you give yourself, the better day you're going to have. What's it? What's it like playing with Pendles? Is he just a wizard on the field? Like even just from an, like, he's just a, he's a bit of a wizard in life. Like, is he? <laughs> he? He'll probably he'll probably admit that too. You know, like he's pretty happy with himself. Yeah. Um, but no, nah, he's one of those guys that's done it all and he's done it for so long. Yeah, like consistent wise, um, leadership wise. Yeah, like he doesn't years, just, he doesn't put a foot wrong. And sometimes I get stuck into him. Like he's, <laughs> he's almost too perfect. You can make mistakes, mate. It's all good, Pendle. Yeah, exactly. But he doesn't need to, you know. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, I do. I, I can't have a. I can't not have a conversation with you without talking about. I guess the year that it's been on the field, but also one of the things that I absolutely love about you, and I've, I've said said this to you before, is like how good you are at having tunnel vision, like when it comes to footy or. Because obviously you're on a platform at a big club and if you sneeze, you're in the news. If you, you know, if you do anything good or bad, it makes, it makes the papers probably more so bad. It makes the back page that the good is the small little paragraph yeah, that, that we've seen at times. Right these days, yep. But, um, I just want to kind of grasp like, cause I think a lot of players might've been affected by like the outside noise that you probably had around your name this year. And like, you didn't seem to bother you on the field. Like you took it in your stride and you played, you did all you could, which was, you know, let the footy do the talking, but like, how, how are you kind of able to do that? Because I think that's really admirable. Like it's really hard. No, I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, this year was difficult for sure. I had a lot of shit going on. Like I've said before, like personal stuff, um, which gets made public obviously just cause you're in the position, um, that I am. And for me, it's like, I've always kind of been that kid when I was younger who was never quite good enough, couldn't get into rep teams, mm. always had to work that little bit harder just to get in the position the other kids had. Um, so I think it was just like, just put in me from that like young age, like built in me that, you know, you just can't keep giving it. You're like, you just can't give up. Yeah. And I just look at my juniors. Like I missed out on, I never made a rep team until under 18s. Really? Under 18s. And there's kids out there that are scouted from, 14, you know what I mean? Yeah. To be the, the big thing. And there's me who gets spotted around 17, 18. Do you, do you, so do you sort of have a chip on your shoulder with that stuff? Oh, like, for is, sure. it, is it still there? Like, yeah, in a for way? sure. That's awesome. I was always that kid that was just, yeah, never quite good enough. And I think just that's, um, it's kind of been my life a little bit. I've always got something to prove. Yeah. I always feel like I've got something to prove anyway. Um, and yeah, there's, there was stuff going on like outside knows, like you talked about, but I knew what was going on inside me. Do you know what so I mean? I knew how I was right. feeling. Yeah. I was comfortable with the situation. Like yeah. Yeah. I knew what was going to be, was going to be. Um, 
but it was like, you know, you put yourself in positions to get the best results. And for me, it was like, I had good people around me. I've, you know, great family. Mm. Um, and I was playing good footy at the time, which therefore takes stress off your back as well. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, if you can tick all those boxes, like alleviate some sort of stress, but it's more the stress that's, you know, by yourself and, and lucky I've got a great sports psych. Jackie Lauda, if you're, if you're going to watch it, I don't know. She probably won't, but uh, she's Shout been huge Jackie. for me, man. Like, I've actually tried to get Jackie on the show. Have know, you? Yeah, I'm, try, I'm trying. Yeah, she's a wizard. She's a wizard. Yeah, she's, she's a genuine wizard. Yeah. I actually, do you know why? I actually went and saw her for my own self yeah. at one point because I remember when there was that like four part documentary on the pies and yeah. then it showed the footage of um, Adzi with, with her in like the rooms. Yep. Correct. And that's, yeah, from there I was like, she looked unbelievable. So oh, if you mate. do a bit of work with her, that's awesome. Yeah. She's huge. I think that's the aspect of the game. You know, people often forget. It's like the mental side of things. Yeah. Like I was going onto the ground feeling as free as I've ever felt. Wow. And, but having her at the club, I could go talk to her and go, Jackie, I've, I could be as small as I've fucking burnt my toast. Oh, can I that? <laughs> yeah. I burnt my toast this morning and it's fucking pissing me off. Can you just let me rant here for a little bit no and then way. I'll go out and I'll be free. So she's the greatest human of all time. Cause she'll sit there and jot that down. Yeah. She's probably he heard me. She's talk, heard genuinely me talk there, a lot of shit. She's genuinely there drawing a penis while you're saying that. Cause I literally, like, yeah, she would have been bored as bad shit. <laughs> listening to me talk, but she sits there and accepts it. Oh, and that's, that's what, like, that was one of the big things for me. It's like, like I said, I was going out onto a field free, like of all these issues that I had. That's amazing, dude. That that's really, really cool. Um, I'm keen to get, um, your opinion on. I guess the comparisons around you and Dusty, because like, do, do you like that? Do you give that any attention? Does, that, does it piss oh, you off? Like, It even... kind of pisses me off because it's like I was a kid and I had one good year at the start. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it was because he kicks goals and he's a powerful kind of guy. And, and that's like I started doing a little bit of that or showing glimpses of that. And then all of a sudden someone puts this label on you mm. and then people people like read about this and then they judge you on that saying. Yeah. And it's just like all this unneeded stress. Like the amount of people that would be like, oh, he's a Kmart Dusty. He's not even. He's, he's, <laughs> that he's, is the greatest line ever. He's, oh, he's not even Dusty's shoelace. Like I get so much funny shit like that, bro. Kmart Dusty. I get shit like that? that flat out. And then I'll play a good game and then they'll be like, oh, actually, no, nah, you're right. You're, you're not too bad. It's a, probably was like the worst time to be compared to him because he literally just won oh, like three premierships. Oh, you the and... fucking best bloke in the game. <laughs> he won. What did he win? And I'm Brought... a kid who's, how old I'm 21, 22, and I'm compared to the best guy in the game. Yeah, three Norm Smiths and like, it's just like, is you kidding yourself if you ever think I'm going to be anywhere near him at that age? Yeah, like, of I'm course. still learning everything about the game. Yeah. Um, but the, like this ties into our thing. This is the expectations of that. And the, uh, I guess the comparison with Dusty, it all came from like the year you had in 2018, like you had yeah, a, the grand final year, grand, grand final year. I mean, you kicked 50 goals. Uh, you're the spearhead forward. You literally almost. Won the, won the grand final for Collingwood. Like I'm comfortable saying that and you lo lost within a kick, obviously, but I'm keen to know how, I guess that, was that your breakout season that year? Yeah, for sure. I think that was, well, we, we kind of had a new structure that year and we needed a deeper forward mm. and I was kind of, I was decent one-on-one -on -one cause I'm just naturally kind of strong. Um, and so they put me down there and it just started to work, you know, like we just started to play well. And the thing is with a, like a breakout season is. Like, it's just not me personally. Like a lot of the boys had breakout seasons. And if you have a lot of people around you who are playing super well, it lifts you. Mm. Like, this is the thing people don't understand. It's like, if you have a really good year and someone else wins the best and fairest, but you improve a shitload, mm. that's a great result. Yeah. Like you don't need awards to look back and go, like I yeah. made a lot of progress here. There is no, is there probably more internal recognition for that? But externally people don't really give that as much. Yeah, but, it's, it, but that's the thing. Like when you're like in a team like that, the way we were playing, we didn't give a fuck about external noise. Like yeah. that time we beat the Tigers, yeah. there's not one person who was saying we were going to beat the Tigers yeah. and then to beat them by like 50 points or 60 points yeah, it was, huge. It was unheard of. Yeah. And that was the thing. We had this belief in our group. Was that was the like, one at the, was that the one? When was that? Was that at the G? Yeah, it was at the G. It was nuts. Was that when you took a hanger? That we talking that game? No, nah, Coxie took a hanger. Oh, Cox. Okay, yep, 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 yep. I know which one. Um, but it was like we had such a good group and everyone was confident in themselves and their role and that's what they would go out there and do. So if it was your role to kick the ball to me, they would make sure they kick the ball to me perfectly every time. Yeah. And then my job would be to finish. But it's like without that bloke doing his role, like – 
and me not doing my role, it's like that's that's where you get this fraction in the team, and that's where it, like performances start to drop. Um, because uh, that year was obviously you guys were so close to winning it. Was was there a feeling in the group that you guys were as good as you are, were going to be as competitive as you as you were that year, or did you kind of? in some ways, just get on a run and catch yourselves a little bit by surprise as well? Um, I don't think we'd say, if you looked at us at the start of the year, I think there would have been confidence within the group, but like not to the point where you go, oh, we're going to go right to the grand final. We're going to go all the way here. Mm. But And that's the problem. At the start of the year, you never know exactly where you're going to sit until you start playing. Yeah. You know, you can think all you want and look around at the boys training and going, oh, we might be a chance, we might be up there. But until you have that first game or five games in and you're still playing the same, then you go, okay, shit, oh, well, maybe we're better than we think we are. The grand final, does that still hurt? <coughs> so, yeah, definitely, for sure. It's, it's going to hurt till the day I die, for sure. Definitely. You, you were so close. Like, you... That's that's one of the worst parts. Like, is it... Is it Good being so close, oh, or would you stranded. rather just get flogged? Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. But the the oh, it's oh, it's oh. how many uh, you kick three right? Three, yeah. Oh, right. But that, that was, was just fun. Like that was. It would have been kick. an amazing time. Oh man. yeah, you're playing in front of almost a hundred thousand. You've done the grand final parade. Like you're sitting in the back of you wave, waving at thousands of fans. You're thinking like this is the best thing ever. Yeah. And then you realise because I was young at that time. You look at it now and you're like, that's so hard to get to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I should have cherished that moment sitting in the back of that, you waving at fans ah, really? so much more. Yeah. Like, you never know. There's players like Maney. Maney's played in two grand finals, lost two. Yeah. And for a bloke like him, he like, you can see the hurt it's caused him by losing him. Like, he deserves to win one. But yeah. the way the game is, it's nothing's guaranteed. You know, yeah. you've got to play the best on that day of the year. Like you can win like Melbourne have done. They've been the best all year. They've dominated all year. But they could lose. But that's irrelevant now. Yeah. It's like, this is the game. Make or break. Yeah. You know what I mean? You you have one shit half, you're done. Yeah. Like this, this is your moment. Because you get punished, don't you? You get punished, just yeah. Just a little bit off. That's what I mean. Because yeah. it's momentum. Yeah. Momentum's the biggest part in AFL. And now there's a crowd at least, which can help momentum shifts. Yeah. Where usually when you play and there was no crowds, it's... Speaking of crowds, I feel like you're the type of guy that plays better in uh, when there's a bigger atmosphere or high pressure situations. Like the games you play good in are usually the games against like your rivals or Anzac Day or yeah. in the finals. Like, is there something about that to you that you recognize or is, is that just kind of just happening? Like, cause I feel nah, like for, for you, sure. you feel like more motivated or just, you know, yeah. excited for something. No, nah, definitely motivated, determined, excited, nervous. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. It's like when you think about AFL, you think 80,000 people, unreal game, like a big finals match. That's what you think when you think AFL. And then when we're playing with no people, you're running out and your theme song's getting played and there's just no noise, like empty stadium. Yeah. It's almost like, like, is this, is this right? Yeah, cause I was like, going to say that must be hard for you. Like it, it is. You imagine you're hearing each other talk. Someone properly. kicks a goal and you'll go up by what? 10 goals or whatever. And it's like, oh yeah, it's yeah. had him on the back. Good it's like job. park yep. football. Ball, throw the ball back to the middle, go again. Uh, it's going to be, um, hopefully next year we have him because that'll, I mean, it's, it's critical for, for some clubs. Like some clubs thrive off the atmosphere. Yeah, for I sure. Mean, That's what I mean. Like for all footy clubs, it's like revenue. Like Yeah, true. Yeah. The, the footy clubs have lost so much money just from no crowds. Yeah. Um, are you a, a goal setter? Like, do you set goals? Because I mean, you, you don't really strike me as one that would, you know, be writing your goals on, on whiteboards or, <laughs> you know, having, you know, you're not that kind of guy, but no. internally, do you kind of actually, are you got some competitive demons you, you're wanting to achieve or? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, some people, you know, they write goals and they stick to those goals and they try and achieve those goals. But for me, like I've found it's like making smaller goals, like, mm. You know, like it could be with Jackie, like see Jackie a few times a week. Like it's getting things, the goals for me are getting things in place to allow me to be the best I can be. Wow. So it's not so much around me as a footy player. It's like, how can I be the best person I can be? How can I be the best preparer? Yeah. How, like what's going to work for me that's going to allow me to then go do my job and do it the best I can. So it's essentially you're putting all these measures in place. So you just go on the field and you feel fit and clear in your mind. Yeah, exactly. Cause the rest, the rest that, happens. That's the problem. The problem is it's like, you can have 
be the best player in your team. Be like for any kid, you know, be the best player in your team, like league best and fairest, so this, so that. But it's like, if you're not getting everything, like if you're not getting your shit sorted everywhere else, mm. I can guarantee you, you're not going to be hitting those goals on field. So it's yeah. almost like, why have on field goals when you're not having the off field goals that are going right. to assist? Right. That's a really good perspective. I actually never thought of that because a lot of people talk about like, oh, I want to get 50 goals this year. It's like, yeah. well, what are, you, what's, what are the measures you've got to do off but the field? But it's like if you're not happy it? off the field, yeah. I can guarantee you you're not going to hit your goals on the field. Yeah, that's if you're If you're, you know, if you're tired and, and you know, over it, then how are you going to do that little bit extra that's going to help you on the weekend? Correct. And that's the thing. It's like how do you keep yourself motivated or happy to a point where, like I said, you feel free or – you feel excited about going out and playing instead of, oh, fuck, here we go. Like, yeah. Man, that's, a, that's an amazing perspective. There you go, folks. Insight into Jordan Dugowie. Who would have thought? The man know, is yeah. a lot smarter than he looks. Um, <laughs> Monster Energy, probably one of the coolest uh, sponsors and, and deals I think you've probably combined with and, and started working with recently. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're the first AFL player to partner with Monster. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Dude, that is insane. And... How on earth did that come about? It's a good question. Um, yeah, and like you said, super lucky. Um, yeah. Shout but, out Monster Energy as well. Yeah, for sure. Way. Yeah, I'll get you some drinks. I'll yeah, get please. Some I've got um, the, uh, the beanie here somewhere. One yeah. sec. Continue, Jordan. Um, yeah, so it was just through, I think, the Supercross guys for the motorbikes. Um, I did an event with them, and they, they must have heard somehow that uh, Monster was looking for an AFL athlete because they wanted to be a major sponsor. Oh, really? The AFL. Um, so then for me, it was kind of natural. It just kind of went together. Um, and they they kind of put my name out there and said, oh, we know this guy, Geordie. He rides motorbikes, fits a lot of the, you know, the build that your guys are looking for. Because um, obviously Mon Monster's a lifestyle brand. Like, Yeah, it is. They do action sports, MMA. Adrenaline like, kind of. Exactly. You know? And that's kind of what I feed off. That's what I enjoy yeah. in my spare time. 100%. Is. So then when I got the opportunity, it was like, oh, it's like chalk and cheese. It was like, here we go. Let's do some cool shit. So um, even now, it's been a bit annoying with COVID. But in the future, we've got some pretty exciting things planned, which, you know, crossing codes, doing stuff different that, you know, the, the footy industry hasn't really seen before. We love innovation. And it wouldn't be, um, cause, cause you're right. You touched on this. You, you are a bit of an adrenaline junkie and the, I've never said, I've actually, when, when the partnership happened, I'm like, that's the perfect brand for you. And like, because one of the things about you is you can't sit still. Like you're not great at sitting still. You no, get bored too easily. Yeah, probably it's probably undiagnosed. Just moving around. Undiagnosed ADD is what I'm going to call it. But, yep. um, like you do, and I think this probably helps your football. You're one of the few guys I know that have a, a lot of actually other interests. Like if, if people probably don't know you well enough, if, if you weren't playing AFL, you'd be happy still because you've got yeah. so many active interests that you do uh, with your friends and obviously on your own. Like can, are you able to talk through some of those things? And like, for instance, motorbiking is one of them. Like how, how, how have you sort of grown that passion? Yeah. So I actually grew up racing dirt bikes when I was a kid. So wow. that was my passion, but I was never as good as at motorbikes as I was at footy. <laughs> so then it kind of, when it got to, you know, the kids talk about getting to the co crossroads of two big sports could have gone either way. Yeah. Like I like to say I could have gone either way, but really, <laughs> I couldn't. You could so have. Just, that's why. But I you play on that now. It's a beautiful thing to play on because no one will know. No, nah, exactly right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like I said, I play on that a fair bit. Uh, so as you guys probably watching, you know, I could have gone both ways, but I chose footy. <laughs> oh, mate, that's unbelievable. Um, I guess the, the only, one of the final things I want to just touch on is the new coach, Craig McRae. Have you guys had an initial discussion? Like, yeah, I caught up with Craig about a week ago, I reckon. And he seems awesome. Like, yeah, it's funny. It's like Bucks was so good and it was almost like you just needed, we just needed a change, mm. whether it was Bucks. Um, something within the club. Yeah, you mean, something just, within the, in the yeah, club. We just yeah. needed a change. Some some fresh ideas. Yeah. Um, fresh yeah. paint on the wall. Like literally something as simple as that yeah. is what we needed. And I think the way he's come in and he's brought uh, Bolton and and Lepich too. So three new guys. Like it's really exciting times. And I think you know the thing I like about Craig. It's just he's just got no ego. Yeah, he seems he's like just he's a, a down to earth he? guy who's just wanting to build great relationships. And get the best out of us as people. Yeah. And like I said before, if you're getting the best out of yourself as a person, you'll get your best out of yourself out on the field. Did it, has he said any sort of 
little challenges or expectations on you for the year? Is he kind of just trying to get you sort of, you know, understand you a bit better as a person? Yeah. At this stage, just getting to know me as a person, but, and that's the thing I said to him, I, I'm like, I don't expect to just play one position or the other. Like I'm happy to, you know, float between the two, whatever the t team kind of needs. Um, and you know, he was really accommodating with that. And he's like, even at this stage, he's like, we don't know what exactly that looks like for you, but we'll work that out and we'll see how preseason's going or, you know, how the team's looking wise. So, uh, still some exciting things to go through. Mate. Uh, Absolutely awesome. Uh, a bit of insight into Geordie Dugowie. I know he doesn't do too much media, but he is one of the best blokes going around. Uh, we, we are going to have to cut off here, guys, because we actually do live in Melbourne and there's a curfew, so we have to get home. But I do promise if, if everyone did enjoy this episode, please let us know. Comment, like, subscribe. We will do a part two with Geordie um, coming into maybe next season when he's, when he's near the, the footy season or, or he's absolutely kicking goals like we know he will. So, um, mate, it was a pleasure having you on the show and we're, we're definitely going to have to run this back again. I think so. Thanks, Jaggy. Appreciate it. Awesome.